Hey guys, Ariel over here, not fine death right at the moment. I am finally getting around to doing a little um, look at how I get water at my house. Um, I'm currently driving to my neighbors. I live in the uh, somewhat rural area in the mountains of northern Wyoming. This is your first time following me. This is in reference to how I get water for my tiny house where I live off grid as in I'm not physically connected to any um, public utilities. I am obviously not totally in the middle of nowhere because you're seeing this. So anyway, my neighbor is not very close. Um, I have several neighbors, but most people are fairly spread out in this particular spot and uh, where I'm going is about a mile up the road from my tiny house. See how this whole filming in the van thing works. Um, anyway, so that's where I'm going. I get my water for my tiny house. This is for drinking, cooking, everything that I do with water inside um, from a the neighbor's well. Um, We've got a phenomenal well, great tasting water, um, you know, pretty much unlimited amount. Um, the neighbors are the ones who own the ground that I'm parked on anyway, so they let me get water from there, and all that it costs me is my time and work to haul it. Um, over the years, I've got asked a lot of questions about this, so I'm going to try to address just a few of them. Why don't I have my own well? Because I don't live on my own property. Drilling a well is really expensive. I live in a semi-temporary situation, though I've been here for almost three full years, um, on somebody else's ground where I trade them work for being able to park my tiny house. And so drilling a well there just doesn't make any sense. Um, why don't I pump water out of the creek near my house into my house? Um, because I live in a very cold area that is cold for much of the year um, and any exterior pipeline stuff would freeze up in the winter. The creek freezes solid from the bottom up actually in the winter. Um, sometimes there's still water running over the top of that but there's no, no good way to do that without having a giant hassle of freezing. Um, Along the same line, why don't I use rainwater collection? Because I live in an area where we get very little rain. The precipitation that the area does get almost all comes down to snow. Occasionally you'll get an extra wet year and you'll get several inches of rain, but um, on average it's an inch or less during the summer months. And I don't have a very big roof space. My entire roof is only my tiny house. And all of that water is already going into my flower and herb beds. Uh, around the house. So it is being used to everything that runs off the roof. So rainwater collection just doesn't really make sense in my particular situation. There are some places it absolutely makes sense. Um, but when you get 700 inches of snow and only like three inches of rain in a year, um, rainwater doesn't make a lot of sense. So then people say, why don't I collect and melt snow? I think that these are mostly people who have never collected and melted snow in their life. Um, you can get water from melting snow, but especially in a climate as cold and dry as the one where I live, um, there's not a whole lot of moisture in the snow. We get about, it varies a little depending on the, the snowstorm, but we get about an foot of snow per inch of moisture. Um, I grew up back east where that proportion was significantly different. There'd be a lot more moisture in the snow, as much heavier, wetter snow. But here that's not the case. So you could get massive buckets of snow and melt and you'd only get that much water. So it's just um, not very practical. So though this is the way I get water um, and it is a little bit of work. It is um, the current best setup for my current situation. Now, at some point in my life, would I like to not have to carry my water by hand again? Yep, that is true. If I am at my on my own property someday, um, I would definitely set up something more permanent for that. Anyhow, I'm at my neighbor's. I am going to um, hop out here and show you how I get my water. Come on along. Okay, so this is the hydrant where I normally fill up with water in the summer. Um, typically my neighbors have their own hose on here that they use and I just take it off and put my little stubby hose on. In the winter they don't use the hydrant. Um, it is a frost free outdoor hydrant so it stays running all summer I mean, all winter um, long but I just use this little stubby hose so that I can easily fill my water jugs. Um, let's get a 
fill that. I've got two of these five gallon water jugs and two seven gallon ones. Um, no particular reason other than I had two of the one and then the others were in sale, so I bought two of them. Um, so this takes just a minute to a few minutes to fill up water. This hosey contraption, it's on only the one jug. I will show you what that's used for when we get back to my house. Because that's how I actually get water into um, the house is internal tank itself. But I'm just getting these all ready to fill. Kind of, I've been doing this for a few years. You can kind of tell when the jug sounds like it's almost full. Jugs here. I've right, got one filling. I'm putting these in the back of my van. I can't recommend. No, they don't pay me to say this or anything. Can't recommend Astro vans highly enough. If you've got some kind of little homesteady, off gritty, um, tiny housey, but you don't need to cool your house on a regular basis situation, I highly recommend these little Astro vans. Um, I'll have to do a whole video on my van sometime. It is set up to camp in, plus it works great as a kind of pickup truck for doing a lot of projects like this. Plus it's all wheel drive, so it does a great job in the um, snow and such and up my muddy dirt road most of the time. Anyway, so I'm going to fill all of these jugs, then drive them back to my house and show you what I do from there. Give a little look at how those jugs all line up in the back of my van. That's the bed. So they get kind of pinched between the bed and the other wall. And that works out really well to um, keep them from toppling over. Got some other junk in there. I'll have to clean that up before doing a video tour of my van. Now we are headed back up to my house from the neighbors where I'll show you what I do with all that water. My doing water this way obviously involves a little work, um, but the big advantage is that living in a place that's this cold, it can be negative 30 something degrees Fahrenheit for several weeks in the winter. Um, old timers that have lived here longer than me tell me it used to be regular to have negative 40s, 50s, or even 60 degree Fahrenheit for weeks at a time. Um, so at some point it may go back to being more of those kinds of temperatures, but anyway, it's a long ways below freezing a lot of the time. So the advantage of my water system, despite the hassle of carrying it by hand, is that everything is internal. I have an internal tank in the house. Um, there's no external lines running to it, so there's nothing to freeze. That is how I do not end up with frozen water pipes. Um, for the pipes to freeze, because they're all inside the house, um, the house itself would have to get below freezing long enough to freeze everything up inside, which would be a problem for all kinds of other things. So anyway, this does um, save me from worrying about frozen pipes. Um, my house is set up that you could run a garden hose to it to fill the tank um, or leave it hooked up so you never had to worry about whether your tank was full or not. But as you can see from this drive here, um, my closest garden hose access point is not really within practical hose running distance. And to run hose for like a mile and then keep that from freezing all winter is also not practical. So this, this really does seem to be the best water system for my current, and as I said, semi-temporary um, location. It's not too around the corner. It's not too big of a deal. Um, it's just one of those chores that you kind of get used to when you live off grid for a while. I have been doing this for three years, so it is certainly doable. Um, I don't actually have to carry it on the top of my head and pack it for miles like uh, a lot of people do in a lot of countries. I can carry it around this handy van. So all things considered, it's really not too bad of a, a deal. Um, when you carry your water this way, you do become very conscious of exactly how much you use. 
and that can vary a little bit for me depending how much I'm home. If you just watch my My Tiny House Let Me Quit My Job video, you'll know that I'm around my house a little more than I used to be, so that does sometimes translate to a little more water use. But with a composting toilet, I don't use water for flushing a toilet. Um, I do use water for cooking, eating, drinking, washing dishes. Um, I can bathe at my house. I do, I do have a shower. I don't generally use it just because of this setup for carrying water. Um, I shower at the gym most of the time, um, so I can use my shower as storage space for other things if you watch some of my other tiny house tours, and that seems to, to work out fine. Um, I, can, I can wash my hair and all that. I've done that, demonstration videos on that and so on, so hygiene's not a problem, but I do try to be conscious of using a minimal amount of water, because if I use it a lot, I gotta go carry more. Um, last time I really measured, I think I used about 140 gallons of water a month, which I think is something less than the average American uses per day. Um, so I don't carry that much water. I do this, like I said, it varies a little depending on what else I'm doing, but I do this. I do this about every every 10 days or so I end up having to go get water and that's, like I said, it's not too big with me. Um, and as near as I can tell because of the reasons that a well is not practical, that pumping water out of the creek is not practical, etc. Um, this seems to be the best setup for me and as I said I've been doing it for years so it works pretty well. Now we're going into my house. So let's actually look up the dirt road through my very dirty windshield. Got some muddy spots in the driveway because we have had more rain than normal this fall, um, plus a lot of snow. Yes, those are cracks in my windshield. Almost everyone in this area ends up with cracked windshields because most of the year there is um, gravel on the roads for traction, and so it just results in never-ending streams of cracks in your windshield. So, I just pulled up to my house, and I'm going to hop out and show you what I do with the water here. Okay, so here we are at my house. This little step was an old mounting block, happened to be lying around the property, nobody was using it. And so I use it to sit on top of my planters where everything's pretty close to dead now to make filling a little easier. This is where water goes in. I've got a connection I'm going to use. There's a second connection here, like I said, for a garden hose setup, which doesn't work for my situation. Now is when you get to explain, uh, get, I get to explain my little hose setup here. This is just a um, piece of hose that I put on the regular lid that comes on this um, kind of water jug. They've got a little hole to screw a spout in. I just screwed a little regular pipe fitting in instead. Put this hose on because my tiny house is set up like an RV. So there is a little trap going into the internal water tank here that hopefully keeps dirt and debris and stuff from getting in there, even, you know, should the lid come off or something, if you were driving down the road, but clearly I don't do regularly. Um, but because of that, you have to get around that to pour water into the tank. So this lets me do that. This is flexi. I just stuff it in here. It gets a little bit stiff. There's kind of a lip there. It catches on. Stuff it most of the way in there. Make sure my lid's tight. And I just set this water jug up here, make sure that stayed the whole way in. Now, you probably can't hear it, but I can hear there's water draining from this jug in here. Having this mounting block here lets me um, not hold the jug the whole time, which is kind of nice. 
because it takes a little bit of time to drain through that hose. So now normally if I'm not making a video, I walk off, I go do something else, and after a while I remember, oh yeah, I'm filling water, and I come back and switch jugs. But I'm going to try to make this a little more concise than that. So this is draining out into here. This internal tank, I'll show you inside um, in a minute, is in the kind of dead space corner behind the sink, uh, between the sink and the fridge. It holds 35 gallons, and then I have a 10 gallon tanked propane water heater. This is the vent for that. Yes, you shouldn't have stuff in front of the vent, but it's not running right this minute. This stuff is only here while I'm filling. Um, so it's going to go away again. So anyway, that gives me room to store 45 gallons of water, basically. Um, like I said, I fill up my water every 10 days or so. Um, that seems to work out pretty well. So this is going to fill up the internal tank. Like I said, that, that prevents there being any kind of external pipes coming or going from anything. And so I don't end up with frozen pipes during our very cold winters. And um, that, that just seems to work out best for my situation. So I'm going to let that drain. We'll switch to the next jug. So while that jug is draining, I'm going to come inside here, show you guys where the water is going. As close as you can see, over here to the kitchen end of the house. It's my double sink. Looking out the window, you can see the water jugs out there. And this dead space right here, this is the fridge, sink, dead corner, um, that's where the water tank is. Now if I need to access the inside of that for something, it's a little bit of a pain, but the way you do it is you pull the fridge out, then you crawl up on the counter around the fridge to get over it because it fills this whole little pathway, and then there's an opening straight in that side that lets you get to the water tank. Um, you can kind of see that under here. There's other storage under my sink. Where's my light? Um, there we go. That is a glow coming from a heat lamp, actually, that's back in there. You can kind of see around the sink into that opening. That just lets me turn that on should I ever be worried about freezing inside. Um, keep that corner extra warm. I've never had a problem with that. Do not need it on. But if you ever have to work in that corner, having the light there is kind of handy. So that's where the internal water tank is. Um, you can see I've got some dishes to put away. Um, the, right under there, and the water heater tank is under there as well. I'm going to go back outside, see if the first jug is done draining, and show you how I switch jugs. Back around the outside of the house. Again, the camera probably doesn't pick this up, but I can hear there's no more water draining, but this isn't quite empty because this sits a little lower than the entrance here. So for the last part, just hold it up. I can hear right away it starts draining again. The other thing I can do, which um, is a little bit of a pain, this would be nice if this was just a hair higher. Um, so, uh, but anyway, this is what I have it, so this is what I is I take one of these water jugs, works better once they're empty, but it's going to be a sec to my empty one, and run that in the opposite order. Um, set this back down here, and just lay one of these right here, drop that on it. Now the whole jug is higher than the drain, and it's going to finish draining all by itself without me having to hold it. Um, if you fill your tank regularly by hand, that might be important because even if you can hold up seven gallons of water at a time while waiting for it to drain, it certainly gets to be a little bit of paint. So that, uh, that makes me just look. So this is almost empty now. It does have a vent hole. This one lost its little cap. Um, but so it, it drains out really well. My jugs are all getting fairly old, so a few of the lids have a couple of little leaks and drips at this point when they're on their sides or upside down. But anyway. Get close to full, and then, because I don't have any good setup to get around the little vet, um, dirt uh, block thing for to hook to this kind of jug, because it's got a different kind of lid. Um, it just doesn't have the same kind of 
setting that this does, I end up pouring these gray jugs into the green one to pour into the house. Um, so if I was buying more jugs at this point, I would get more of the green ones just so I didn't have to uh, do that transfer, but it works and it's not too big of a pain. So again, that's what I've been doing for a while. When this is almost empty, it becomes pretty light to hold up here. You can drain out the last little drops, prop it against the house. Again, I can hear it draining here. Um, the way I know when my tank is completely full is there's a little overflow here. So if we'd hit full, which we're not there yet, um, I would see water start flowing back out over here. It's not going to overflow into anything inside. So last couple drops there. There we got bubbles. Uh, pull that out. And now I need my, my hose lid for whichever jug I'm going to do next sometimes get on here a little bit tight. Um, but as I said, we're going to transfer it out of here. So set that somewhere level. My ground's not over a level in my lawn. And so that my jug for my prop is empty, just do this. And it works best if I turn it upside down there, then open the vent. Don't, don't spill as much. Um, Draining that one into my green one. Goes. And I never put anything other than water in these jugs. Ever, ever, ever. Um, only clean drinking water. So now that one's empty, so it can be my prop there. I just have to put my hose back on. This up here again. Work my little cozy thing back around that little stopper. Set this up here. Make sure the lid's on tight so you don't have water leaking. And there you go. Now I've got another one until I drink so I can walk off again and do whatever else I'm doing. And come back and put two more jugs in. Okay, so second jug's empty. With it propped up here, when I come back, it's just empty. There's an air bubble there. And shake the last few drops out. Um, get caught in the curve of the jug there. Pull that out. Again, I know my tank's not full because I don't have it overflowing here. Not sure exactly how empty it is because I decided not to wait till a really frigid, miserable day to fill this up. So it wasn't on empty. Um, so, let's see how many of those jugs it takes. I think it's going to take all of them. Jug number three going in. get the hose seated the whole way in there, you do get it leaking back out around it. And for whatever reason, this uh, lid is one of my ones that's developed a little leak. If I just put a little pressure on there, it doesn't leak so much. Um, how do I know when my internal tank is empty? Uh, it's kind of an experience thing. If you've ever used an RV with an internal water pump, you're probably familiar with this, but other people may not be. You can kind of hear the pump start to just subtly change tones. Because there is no gauge in there, there's nothing I can look at and be like, oh, it's at an eighth of a tank or something. Um, there might be a way to set that up, but uh, that's just something I've never tried to do. But as soon as the water gets a little low, I can hear the slightest change in the pump when it draws, like when I turn on the faucet at the sink, and I know that my tank is empty. I also just um, have enough experience now over the years that I generally have an idea, ah, it's been a little while since I felt it, I've done this, I've done this, I've used this, whatever, it's probably getting low, um, so I, I should fill it before I'm out, which is what I'm doing right now. Because when I first started, first moved in three years ago, um, I wasn't used to this setup, it took a little bit of time for it to become more automatic, and so I would do things like, it would be negative 30 degrees outside, I'd be washing dishes after dinner, I would run out of water in the middle of washing dishes because my tank was empty, and nobody feels like going out in the dark um, in that temperature or that many degrees below freezing to fill the tank. So it, it does take some getting used to, but once you do, um, it's not too bad to, to keep the system going evenly so that I'm doing this during daylight. It's not raining on me. It's not freezing. Obviously, there are times in the winter where you have to do it when it's freezing anyway, but um, it's more pleasant to do it when it's not so cold. So that's what I'm doing here today, filling it up. 
um, before I'm completely out. Again, if you are somewhere with a similar tiny house set up, but without it being so cold or without living a mile from your closest well hydrant, you can just screw a regular garden hose onto here. Um, I have friends that have used them even in colder climates with some success um, as long as they had a, a heated hose or a heat tape wrapped hose um, so that it wouldn't uh, freeze on them. Those seem to work well, but then I would have to have both a much shorter distance and have to have power enough to supply the heat tape, which my little solar system probably would not do. Those tend to, to draw a good bit of power. So again, this is my system. That's why I don't do a well, don't do rainwater, don't pump water out of the creek down the hill um, for my drinking water and so on. But this works for me. I do pump well, water from the creek during the summer to um, water the garden and stuff like that. Um, but I pull all those hoses and drain everything for the winter so they don't freeze and burst. So it wouldn't, wouldn't work real well. Now I've just hit full. Let me show you guys this. So this is how you know it's full. See this little thing here running out. So I'm gonna set the camera down and oh, there you go. Um, and pull this out. But when it's overflowing, I just pulled it out so it'll take a second to stop. When it's overflowing out of that little screened hole, I know my tank is completely full. So I'm going to put my cap back on here. This is where you would hook your garden hose if you were going to do that. You can see it says city water connection. And what's it going to say? Fresh water connection. Um, this you could lock up, but I don't ever lock it. I just turn the, the key to turn the latch. Um, so that is full and good to go. So I do have one water jug left if you were paying attention there that is not empty yet. Um, so because it's not below freezing I'm just going to let it sit here and in a given an extra day I'll just pour it in there um, because I'll have made some more room. So that is my water setup. Then I just put my water jugs. Let's see if I can do this one hand. That's actually where the uh, drain comes out of the house. Um, if somebody's going to ask about that, I, I don't have any black water since I have a composting toilet. Um, the only water that drains is from the, the sink and such. Um, I'm going to go back around this way to go back to the shed. Um, and that water does drain directly onto the ground. My soil is super rocky around here and I'm on a hill. It drains into the hill, waters the trees on that edge of the hill. I don't put any toxic chemicals in it and they seem very happy about it. This is a former outhouse. That's my tool shed. This is where I keep my water jugs. I'm not very well organized at this time of year because everything ends up in here for the winter. I've got a shelf up top where these all just sit. Somebody asked, how do I keep them from freezing in here? I don't. I put them away in here empty. So any jugs that are up there are empty so they can just freeze. There's nothing in them. So that is how I get water for my off-grid tiny house. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope that's helpful with some ideas if you're doing the same kind of thing.